This time on Monkey Life. Emergency surgery for Capuchin Diaz. Unfortunately, Diaz got quite a nasty injury. Um, it's quite a big slash wound. Staff prepare to welcome Sam's new mate, Sasak. We're putting up some hosing, some baskets and stuff to put her food in to make sure she can actually move around the enclosure comfortably. And Oshin shows her softer side to baby Sylvester. We've really been quite impressed with Oshin's maternal instincts. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. For 25 years, the team have been rescuing and rehabilitating primates from all over the world. We've really done everything we can to make her journey as smooth as possible. The park is run by Dr. Alison Cronin and is home to more than 240 monkeys and apes. It's early morning, and animal director Jeremy Keeling is on his way to the Capuchin house. There's been an emergency. We were just sort of releasing the animals into the enclosure, um, and we heard a scuffle in one of the bedrooms. And unfortunately, Diaz got quite a nasty injury. Um, it's quite a big slash wound to his mouth. Diaz is currently living with Bruce, Archie, Joey, a new arrival, Tao. But no one knows who the culprit is. We didn't exactly see who actually did it, but um, capture monkeys have very, very sharp teeth, so it can do a lot of damage. Diaz is going to need the wounds stitched. So over at the Parks Hospital, the theatre is being prepared. The plan today is to give him an anaesthetic um, and then to clean up and flush out and suture the wound. This kind of incident isn't uncommon among captive capuchins who are living in close proximity. We've had two or three of this nature on the cheek, you know, the Chelsea smiles. I'm pretty sure it was just an isolated, you know, just being in the wrong place at the wrong time because there's no reason to think other than that. You know, you've always got bad guys and good guys in any group, family situation. And of course, the more individuals you've got in that group, then the more chances of there being disputes. We just sort him out, stitch him up, and back in the ring for another guy. At the moment, the Capuchin team are in the lodge and they're just preparing Diaz to go into the crate. He's actually had a pre-medication just to calm the nerves down. Jeremy has managed to get Diaz into a box for his trip to the hospital. Cesar Sastre, one of the park's veterinary team, has been called in. This isn't the first time Diaz has been in a scuffle, but he's never had such a serious injury before. The pre-med has taken effect. Thazar wants to make sure Diaz is asleep before they proceed. He's quite dopey now on the dazzler. When I caught him, he wasn't. That's what I'm thinking. Nice. Well, then let's, let's give him a bit of gas. It's going to give us a good 30 yeah. minutes. Yeah. 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 I'll leave that out. At least have a look at him. Yeah. He's going to be cut all the way through, so it's going to be on the oral mucosa, so on the inner part of the, of the mouth. Um, so I will need to stitch up pretty much both sides, the external and internal. Repairing this wound is not going to be straightforward. Diaz will need a lot of stitches. Thazar is keen to get underway as soon as possible. It's a big day for the park's only Siaman Gibbon. Sam is about to have some company at last. His son Onion died recently when the veterinary team found an inoperable tumour in his gut. Alison was determined to find Sam a new partner. She searched far and wide and finally came up with a suitable mate. Sasak is a female Siamang currently living at Dublin Zoo. She'll be arriving this evening. The primate care staff are preparing a temporary house for her. Ryan, do you want to attach that to that hose behind you? Sasak is perfect for Sam, as she's fairly elderly and has already had several offspring. But it'll be unsettling for her to leave the family she's currently with. 
We're putting up some hosing, some baskets and stuff to put her food in to make sure she can actually move around the enclosure comfortably, um, make it as homely as for her and welcome as possible. We're just putting some brows up for Sasak um, so that when she comes out tomorrow morning, it's nice and um, welcoming and it's kind of got a bit of natural food for her to eat. Um, and also she can kind of hide amongst it and just feel a bit more like she's in a natural environment. When Sasak arrives, she'll be kept in these bedrooms to give her time to settle. This will also be where she'll meet Sam. We use this house really for doing introductions because you never know what could happen. Um, so by having these smaller bedrooms, it means that we have the control whilst we're doing that. Everyone is looking forward to the imminent arrival. It's really exciting for us, but obviously the, the biggest concern is for Sam and his happiness. Um, he has been a little bit down of late, but he has recovered really well from his bereavement. Um, and now we just hope to, that he's going to get on really well with her and they're going to have a, a really happy future together. At the hospital, Diaz is about to be stitched up. Early this morning, he suffered a nasty slash on his face when he got involved in a scuffle with the other boys. Like most of the capuchins at the park, Diaz was rescued from Chile, where he'd spent all his life in a laboratory being used for research. It's very sleepy, so I think we can mask yeah, straight away. Yeah. yeah. The primates are only ever put under anaesthetic when absolutely necessary because of the risks involved. So this is a perfect opportunity to check Diaz over and make sure he has no other obvious health problems. The pulse is very fast at the moment, it's 180. It still feels normal, that's good. That muscle that you can see here is, is the masseter muscle, is the masticatory one, the one that you used to chew. And yeah, I thought it was going to be broken all along here, but it's not. So just stitch up that little hole that you can see in there, and then the, the skin all across is fairly clean. Surely we can clip it and clean it well. Mm -hmm. Penny shaves Diaz because the area needs to be as sterile as possible to avoid him catching any kind of infection. It's actually a very fresh wound. It's just taking a few bits out here. And that is what I'm going to stitch up first. And we go layer by layer. So we go start in the deep area and then coming back. Thesar is using dissolvable stitches to avoid having to anesthetize Diaz a second time. This is an absorbable material, so it's going to be absorbed. So we are not going to leave any external stitches. It's a delicate procedure. Thesar is having to sew the muscle inside Diaz's cheek, as well as the outer skin on his face. Three layers, pretty much, is what you have to do with these things. And you hide all the stitches inside. Ideally, here, you should put external stitches, but he's going to pick them as soon as he wakes up. That's, that's the problem with these animals. But Thesar has thought of a clever way to stop Diaz picking at his stitches. I'm going to put a couple, well, few external stitches for him to play. A distraction? Yep. Okay. Yeah, this is pure distraction for him to play with. So that's it. OK, let's see how many of those external ones are there tomorrow. Huh? Yeah. With the wound successfully sewn, Diaz is wrapped up to keep his body temperature from plummeting as he comes round. Is this has drop temperature a lot. And particularly the smaller the animal, the more chances to have problems. Thesar gives Diaz an injection to wake him up. But the little capuchin shows no signs of stirring. The team are becoming concerned. Come on, Diaz. He's still very sleepy. Well, you have to wake up now. Thesar tests for a reflex. Still nothing. Right, let's turn you around. <laughs> ah, that's oh. good. Oh, that's really nice, thank you. To everyone's relief, 
Diaz starts to wake up. He's got proper reflex and he's breathing much faster now. The next few hours are critical for Diaz. Jeremy and the team will keep a close eye on him to make sure he fully recovers and doesn't get into any more fights with the boys. Things are changing at the Orang Nursery. Oshin is finally beginning to fit in with the others. And it's all down to baby Sylvester, who's discovered her softer side. The big orangutan was brought up as a pet in South Africa, where she was used to getting her own way. She'd never come across other orangs until she arrived at the park and didn't know how to behave around them. However, when Sylvester was rehomed from a zoo in Spain recently, staff hoped Oshin would take a shine to the baby and take him under her wing. His early start in life was clearly a good one, even though his mother didn't care for him. He's gregarious, he's open-minded, he's not introverted and frightened of new things. Whenever he meets anybody new, human or orangutan, out comes the hand to say hello. And Oshin was no exception. It took a little while for her to acknowledge him, but he finally began to make inroads. She was a little bit unsure at first. She really just didn't know what to do with Sylvester. But what was clear is what we've always known about Oshin. She's actually got a really lovely temperament inside of that big body of hers. And once, you know, we took things slowly and she could see that he wasn't going to be a challenge or a threat to her, she welcomed him with open arms. Now the two of them are rarely apart. We've really been quite impressed with Oshin's maternal instincts. I mean, it's, it's not bad going considering that she's never seen any other mother and youngster relationships occurring. She looks after him and makes sure that things aren't getting out of control and mainly, she always knows where he is. She's got what looks like quite a vice-like grip around either a wrist or an ankle, holding him close, making sure that he's participating in whatever she does. The other orangs in the nursery, Linga, Dinda and Jolie, all love playing with Sylvester, but Oshin keeps a motherly eye on him. She really is quite sort of protective. She keeps, even if he's sort of wandered off a little bit, her always out of the corner of her eye, she watching him. If the others start to get too interested or too boisterous, out comes the big hand. She grabs hold of a wrist or an ankle and just reels him back in again. Sylvester may have gained a mum, but Oshin is benefiting too. It's easy to look at Oshin and Sylvester's relationship and say, oh, isn't that lovely for the baby? But actually, this relationship might even be more critical for Oshin than it is for, for Sylvester. Everybody loves him, but Oshin's a different case. She's a very big girl, she's fully mature now, so she has a lot of catching up and relearning to do. With Sylvester on board, it's breaking down a lot of those barriers, and I think the others are now beginning to see that Oshin has a caring side to her. With the arrival of Sylvester and everything else, I really feel that she's turned a corner. Her face is just so much more relaxed, and she seems to have almost an optimistic twinkle in her eye. Oshin isn't the only one who's been making friends. Another recent arrival has been settling in well and is about to go outside for the first time. Woolly monkey Sarah has been rehomed from a zoo in the United States. She's joined Bueno's group and it's hoped eventually she'll breed. For the last few days, she's been getting to know the others. So far, the group are doing really, really well together and today is the first time we're going to let them outside and fingers crossed that it'll go well. Paolo, Bueno and Yurima are all keen to go out into the enclosure after being shut up inside. Three-year-old Paolo lets off some steam on the hoses. Come on, Sarah! But it's all very new for Sarah. We waited a few days to let the group out just so that they had a chance to spend time close together, make sure that we could determine if there were going to be any serious problems. Paolo, ever the exhibitionist, is keen to show her the ropes. Paolo really likes Sarah and is spending a lot of time playing with her and enjoying himself. 
she does begin to follow Paolo's lead. But he playfully sabotages her attempt to walk the hose. Woolly monkeys have prehensile tails, which makes them great acrobats. The tail acts as a fifth limb. In the wild, this is very useful as it means they can balance and grip onto branches to grab food below. Sarah makes good use of hers to stop Paolo shaking her off. Staff are keeping a close eye on Yurima. Being the dominant female in the group, her nose may have been put out of joint by the arrival of another adult female. Yurima's been friendly, but there was a slight bit of tension there. We're hoping that's just because they've been confined inside together and hopefully they'll relax now that they've got a bit more space. Bueno watches from the sidelines and clearly has eyes for the new girl. Bueno and Sarah have developed sort of quite a close friendship. Bueno's obviously very attracted to her. She's playing hard to get at the moment. It's one thing getting the primates to go outside, quite another persuading them to come back in at the end of the day. All we've got to do now is to get Sarah used to the routine so that she knows when she needs to come back in. Paolo leads the way, and to the relief of the Woolly Monkey team, Sarah follows. Now that we know there's not any serious problems, fingers crossed everything's going to go really well. Hi, anyone want some insects? Capuchin monkey Diaz has recovered from his anaesthetic and is now back with the boys. Earlier today, he had to be rushed to the hospital after keepers found him with a nasty slash wound on his face. They still don't know who was responsible, but doubt it was done deliberately. When we first got him back, he was obviously a bit groggy and things from the anaesthetic, but we've put him back in with the little group, so he's with Archie, Bruce, um, Tao and Joey. We wanted to get Diaz back in with his friends as soon as possible. We do find that when they do start to pick up wounds and things, it's generally when they've got less to do and there's less animals around to keep them company. So we thought, we'll keep him busy, he's got lots of friends to groom with, um, lots of rooms to go between, and hopefully that will stop him being focused on the stitches. Diaz needed almost 20 stitches. He's obviously aware that there's something there. Um, he keeps sort of every so often, like, just pushing at it or maybe sort of stretching his mouth out a bit, which is perfectly natural, it's obviously going to feel weird. But he's not actually, where some animals can be really focused and pick away at it, we've not seen him doing that yet. So hopefully he'll sort of carry on and just be aware of it and then as the stitches dissolve over time and it heals, it'll just be better for him. His sore mouth doesn't seem to have put him off his food. We've been offering him extra things like supplements of milkshake and rice pudding and things he likes, and he's shown no problem eating anything that we've offered him. Tao, Bruce, Joey and Archie seem pleased to have Diaz back, and so far there hasn't been any more trouble. A few of them have sort of gone up and looked at his face a little bit. Whether that's just a friendly greeting or whether they're aware that something is different, I don't know, but they're not focused or sort of pulling at it, which is the important thing to us. Obviously, when we saw the wound, it looked really painful and we felt really bad for him because he was pushing a lot at his mouth and obviously really bothered by it. It was obviously very stressful for him, so it's great that he seems less bothered now and is going about his daily business as normal. It's 8pm and the park's new Siaman Gibbon Sasak is about to arrive. Her journey from Dublin Zoo has taken more than eight hours, so the team are keen to get her settled as soon as possible. The plan is for Sasak to stay in this bedroom on her own overnight, so she can rest before meeting her new partner, Sam. Hello, sweetheart. It's obviously been a really long journey for her, and it won't be until the morning until she really gets her bearings. This is all completely alien and different for her. Now, they need to persuade Sasak to come out of her travel crate. Come on, Sasak. Sasak. Oh. But she's wary. Come on. It's all right. Good, Good girl. Come in. It's all right. 
She's nervous, I think. Lots of unfamiliar faces all around the box, and she's obviously been in there for a while, and this is a completely new environment. It's dark. She was sleeping when she arrived. Eventually, she does pluck up the courage to start exploring. Good girl. It's all right. I think we'll keep it low key now and just make sure she's okay and then really leave her for the evening to get a good night's sleep. It's a huge sense of relief, obviously, when, when they arrive and, and to see her safely in, inside the enclosure. And actually, she was really nervous when she first came out of the, the box, but she's gone into every room and she is exploring. And we've given her a few sleeping options. I mean, there's obviously benches in there, but we've also put up some hammocks and a basket. So she's got a choice of where she decides to settle down for the night. Hopefully she'll hear Sam calling in the morning and know that there's another Siamang nearby. I think we'll see how she's eaten overnight um, and just give her a good check and get to know her, really. Next time on Monkey Life, Alison goes to the rescue of a baby marmoset in Liverpool. The fact that he's being kept in a small hamster cage is just ridiculous. And O'Sheen hogs the treats at the Orang Nursery. It's her barrel, and uh, then when she has enough, then all the girls can have a go. 